Hello and welcome to Bespoke Unit, I'm CP and in this video I'm reviewing Amberjack Shoes. Amberjack Shoes was founded by John Peters who after graduating college started working for a consulting firm where he learned quite a lot about the shoe industry because he worked with a number of big players. However, he became quickly disillusioned because he found that most brands were always seeking cost reduction rather than innovation or environmental sustainability. Meanwhile, he was inspired by other brands like Allbirds who were really trying to innovate, but they were mostly targeting the casual market. Therefore, as somebody who needed to wear dress shoes for work, but found them to be incredibly uncomfortable, he then was inspired to create his own brand, which would merge these two concepts together, something that is dressy enough to wear at the office, yet is gonna be comfortable enough to wear all day when you're running around to different meetings. Although he knew a lot about the shoe industry, as a business, he actually didn't really know how to make a shoe. Therefore, he teamed up with some friends who were Jake Rudin and James Seuss. Uh, Jake Wooden worked at Adidas, whereas James Seuss, you may have heard of if you're really into shoes and you know the industry quite well, he was the CEO of Cole Han and oversaw the merger between Nike and Cole Han back in 2012. Now, although there was this nice melting pot of skills, they still needed a designer, so they approached John uh, Kraljevich, who is a well-known designer for brands like Allen Edmonds, Coach, Rag & Bone, as well as John Vavatos. You see, John Peters didn't just want to create a new casual dress shoe hybrid brand. He wanted to create something that really incorporates to a much more fundamental level the comfort of the athletic uh, sneaker, but then also have a dressiness and a design that was going to appeal to a young professional market who could perhaps wear it in a business casual environment. I wouldn't say business professional though, but I'll get to the aesthetics, the style, and the comfort later on. I just want to carry on a little bit here with the background. Another thing, uh, another priority for John was sustainability, and this was something that he saw day in, day out in his main job. The brands didn't really respect uh, environmental sustainability. Instead, they were primarily greenwashing. There was a, a wave of marketing campaigns that sought to create the image of cleanliness and environmental friendly products. However, in reality, they didn't take the necessary steps. John did this differently and from the ground up, from day one, he made sure that it was a carbon neutral brand. Everything from the packaging, which I haven't included here because what's interesting with the packaging is that it is a cardboard box that contains the shoes. There isn't a cardboard box that has your address on it, and then the box inside is just one box. And for this reason, I didn't include it because it's covered in my address, and I don't really want to show that on YouTube. And on top of that, they don't use any plastics or anything else. These shoe bags aren't made from nylon, for example. They're made from linen, and they're very, very nice. Anyway, moving on. So. Here we have a brand that starts as carbon neutral, but John also wanted to take steps in the materials and the manufacturing processes that he followed in making these shoes. So he teamed up with a partner factory in Portugal that was traditional enough to have a deep appreciation for the craft, but was adventurous enough to try and experiment with new materials and new designs. And meanwhile, the leathers here on the uppers and in the lining, so on the uppers we have um, a a-grade, full-grain leather that was sourced from Monterey in uh, Mexico. And this is only from American cowhides. And then on the interior, we have a very soft suede new buck leather. And I really like the lining as well because it does offer additional comfort when you're wearing the shoes. So with all that being said, and I hope it gives you a nice broad overview of Amberjack as a brand, let's talk about the shoes themselves. So currently, Amberjack only produces the original, which is their first model and it comes in three colorways which are brown, black and tan. Here I have the tan model. It is made with over 20 different components and um, these components were all custom designed by John uh, Kravievich as well as the factory and other vendors with whom uh, John has worked to create uh, Amberjack as a brand. So first of all, let's talk about the insole. And this is kind of deriving uh, from uh, Kravievich's work on the Adidas uh, Ultra Boot. So we have a heat activated arch support here. 
uh, that responds to pressure and will eventually mold to the shape of your foot, which will give you a more personalized experience. On the front is very flexible. This is kind of inspired by athletic footwear, but the back is very thick. As you can see, it's three times thicker than uh, regular um, insoles like this. And it has a design that is inspired by hiking footwear. So it's meant to give you better traction, better grip. It cups the heels and the balls of the foot in place. Similarly, the midsole and the outsole is uh, an element that uh, John Peters is particularly proud of, and this took two years on its own to develop. This is made from a TPU uh, blend, a custom TPU blend. So the grip is very subtle here. It's very reminiscent of an athletic shoe. It gives you good grip. Uh, meanwhile, uh, you're going to get excellent shock absor absorption and stability thanks to the, the wide heel counter at the back. Uh, the design itself is um, quite interesting. For example, here we have some uh, perforations, which gives you extra uh, ventilation underneath the vamp, and you have some elastic elements on the vamp that keeps it, braces it in place. I have actually worn this, uh, these shoes like this, so with the, the laces um, not done up, but inside the shoe to have a more sneaker aesthetic, and I've also tried them tied up. Now, on the site, uh, Amberjack says that you should order half a size below because they run large, and indeed that is certainly the case, at least with me. I ordered a half size below, but I found that they were still quite roomy, not to the point of where they were too big and uncomfortable to wear, but I did feel that I had a, a lot of room to move about, and it, to be honest, it was quite comfortable, but I probably could have gone another half size down for a tighter fit. Now going back to the design, so we have this lovely um, Mexican, well, actually American cowhide leather upper that is tanned in Mexico. Uh, the um, contrast that you have with the midsole and the outsole, for me, it was perhaps a little bit too much uh, in my personal taste. I'm quite um, conservative when it comes to shoes. So here we have this streak along the uh, instep, which is very reminiscent of a sneaker. Meanwhile, this is kind of juxtapositioned by the derby finish uh, here at the top. And nevertheless, it does marry well concepts between athletic footwear and dress shoes. Uh, if we were to compare this with, for example, here, this is the Wolf and Shepherd uh, closer cap toe. Uh, this is much more in line with a traditional dress shoe. In fact, it is basically a dress shoe, although it uses things like a a lightweight Phoenix, uh, Phoenix Tech um, outsole and a memory foam footbed. And we were to compare the two, so this is the memory foam footbed. For a start, it's a lot squishier than Amberjack. And the reason being is that Amberjack has chosen a different material that although has some of the properties of uh, memory foam, the idea is that it offers support for longer and it doesn't degrade in the same amount of time. Now these shoes are about two months old and they're already getting a bit squishy because I wear them a lot. And if you compare the thickness, let's see if you can if you can see quite well here, if you compare the thickness like that, you'll see that the one on Amberjack is significantly thicker. In fact, actually you can't see because it cuts, but if I were to flatten that and then compare this on the side, you see that the one on Amberjack is significantly thicker and it will give you better performance and a more comfortable fit. Admittedly, overall, the Amberjack shoe is uh, more comfortable than Wolf and Shepherd, although I do love Wolf and Shepherd and personally, I probably wear this more because of its more conservative traditional design. However, going business casual and actually talking to my stepson who's 16, he prefers the design of the Amberjack. This would be something he'd be more inclined to wear um, if he was starting work or uh, wearing more business uh, casual styles, uh, he'd be more inclined to wear this style. For him, it's more contemporary, it's more stylish, whereas I would probably go for Wolf and Shepherd if I was going to maybe a business meeting and wearing a suit. When it comes to wearing Amberjack, uh, as you can see here, I'm wearing an Eaton shirt with an Indochino blazer, and I'm also wearing a pair of Twillery uh, pants. This would be much more, in, much more appropriate than perhaps the Wolf and Shepherd close-up. That being said, um, I would probably go for maybe a chino trouser rather than dark navy. Anyway, moving on. So like I said, uh, this is probably going to be better choice for the contemporary young professional crowd who are looking to dress up a little bit, particularly they're from the digital age, it's post-COVID, they want to go for something more business, casual, but they don't want to go for a full-blown suit. This would be ideal. It really does uh, bridge the gap between casual and dress footwear. Additionally, given its price point of only $179, which isn't cheap, 
but is much cheaper than a lot of other comfort-oriented br uh, brands. Uh, it offers excellent value for money. Indeed, admittedly, it does use what appears to be a cement construction, but this is the case for most comfort-oriented boots. For example, Wolf and Shepherd use a variety of cement uh, soling, as do Vionic, Mephisto, and all the others. The thing is, with brands not including Wolf and Shepherd, brands like Vionic and Mephisto aren't very attractive or have a tendency to be very bulky, to not be really designed with style in mind. They're very functional, yes, but they don't look very good. Whereas Amberjack, as mentioned earlier, is designed by John Kravievich, who has worked with Coach, uh, with um, John Vavatos, and a number of other designer brands. This is something that really has uh, aesthetics in mind. And then when it comes to the comfort, like I said, it's a very nice shoe to wear. It's basically like going around in a sneaker, although you do have a slight dressiness to it. Uh, other elements that I did mention, for example, is the cushioning around the ankle, which is very nicely thought out. This is something, for example, Wolf and Shepherd doesn't have, an extra padding in the vamp. And of course, you have a little heel loop to pull the shoe on, which is something that you don't see on any uh, sort of comfort-oriented dress shoe, unless you're going to be looking at boots. So yes, overall, Amberjack is certainly a brand I would recommend if you're kind of looking for something stylish, a bit dressy, but very comfortable, and you're more in sort of the business casual uh, dress code, it's uh, an excellent option, offers good value for money, and I imagine it's going to last for quite a while, but we will probably follow this up with another review, maybe in six months to a year time, if you're interested. Leave us a comment down below if that's something you would like to see. Anyway, that's all for me today. And if you have enjoyed this video, give us a like, give us a subscribe, and leave a comment down below. Otherwise, you can check our full written review of Amberjack, which is in the description below. And you can also check out bespokeunit.com to see all the other lifestyle subjects that we cover. I'm sure that there'll be something you'll love. But until next time, take care.